SCP-3115. 99.7 Cognito Hazard FM. Object Class. Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-3115 is to be locked inside a standard item storage locker at site redacted. This locker is to be placed centrally within a containment cell measuring 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters and secured to the floor with standard steel bolts. The cell is to be lined with soundproofing material with an STC, sound transmission class, rating of greater than 60. At no time should the USB of SCP-3115 be inserted into an electronic device except for the purpose of an approved test. All tests must be approved by no fewer than two Level 4 personnel stationed at Site Redacted and the on-site memetics department. Researchers wishing to observe testing with SCP-3115 may do so only with the aid of a video feed. No audio transmissions are permitted to leave the containment chamber whilst testing is in progress due to risk of containment breach. See Testing Log. Update. Testing has been suspended pending post-incident review by order of the Department of Security. See Incident Report IR-3115A for further updates. Description. SCP-3115 is a set of standard audio headphones consistent with those manufactured in the early 21st century. The headphones contain no external markings and show signs of slight use. The headphone portion of SCP-3115 is plugged in with a standard double-ended USB cable which was present with SCP-3115 at acquisition. When connected to an electronic device via the USB connector, SCP-3115 will begin to play audio snippets from various radio stations from around the world. Testing has confirmed that the radio broadcast from SCP-3115 matches that which the particular station it is tuned to is broadcasting at the time. To date, no technology capable of receiving said signals has been found in or on SCP-3115, and its means of receiving these signals is unknown. SCP-3115's anomalous effects manifest when a human being places the headphones over their ears and connects SCP-3115's USB to any electronic device. The device's ability to transmit audio data appears irrelevant. SCP-3115's anomalous properties would manifest even if connected to a USB-compatible charger. When a human subject places SCP-3115 over their ears, a noticeable change in the audio output will occur. The subject will continue to hear broadcasts from a random radio station. However, all talking, singing, and other vocalizations will now be narrated by an unknown male-sounding entity known as SCP-3115-A. SCP-3115-A is described as talking with a formal English accent and has a seemingly jovial tone. SCP-3115-A will continue to narrate and sing all content broadcast from the radio station currently being broadcast by SCP-3115 in real time for approximately 15 minutes of use. SCP-3115-A will continue to narrate broadcast audio after 15 minutes of SCP-3115 being worn by human subject, however will now include additions to the standard broadcast. The anomalous effect of SCP-3115 ceases when the headphones are removed from the human subject and the voice of the transmission will return to that of the DJ or artist. Level 4 Clearance Required Addendum 3115-1 After 15 minutes have elapsed with the human subject listening to SCP-3115-A, SCP-3115-A will make additions to the standard broadcast. SCP-3115-A will at random appear to say words, phrases, 
and describe abstract concepts, which almost without exception prove to be cognitohazardous to the human subject listening. Subjects which are exposed to the cognitohazardous vocalizations of SCP-3115-A will begin to display symptoms immediately. Symptoms will increase drastically depending on the amount of vocalization additions heard. Once the original 15 minutes has elapsed, there appears to be no correlation to the frequency of other additions. Number of additions heard 1. Subject experiences visual hallucinations of varying content and severity. A consistent theme appears to be the perception of a humanoid entity standing within the room they are currently in. Subjects will perceive audio being output by SCP-3115 as coming from this entity. Subjects universally report the early stages of a migraine at this stage. Number of additions heard? 2 through 4. Subject experiences symptoms from previous additions. Subject also reports the apparent inability to remove SCP-3115 from their heads or unplug it from the electronic device. Physical intervention at this stage in removing SCP-3115 from the head of a subject will cause the symptoms to abate within one hour. Number of additions heard, 3 through 5. Subject experiences symptoms from previous additions. Subject also report seeing symbols on the walls, floor, and ceilings of an unknown language. These symbols cause extreme pain in those who observe them and are capable of causing subjects to lose consciousness. Number of additions heard? 6 plus. Subjects expire within seconds of hearing a sixth addition. Prior to expiration, subjects began to involuntarily vocalize the cognitohazardous additions they have so far heard. This is capable of spreading the cognito hazard to further individuals. Given the rapid vocalizations of the subject at this stage, the propagation of the hazard is extremely fast, and further infected individuals will enter the latter stages of infection in moments. Testing Log Test 3115 1 Subject D88743 Procedure D88743 is directed to enter the containment chamber and plug SCP-3115 into a provided USB portable power pack and remain within the room for 5 minutes. D88743 is not directed to wear SCP-3115. Results D88743 follows instructions and reports faintly hearing a broadcast consistent with BBC Radio 1's morning show coming from SCP-3115. Note, D88743 is near to SCP-3115 but is not wearing it. D88743 disconnects SCP-3115 from the power pack and exits the chamber without incident. Analysis Site redacted is shielded from all outside broadcasts. Audio output is later confirmed to be consistent with BBC Radio 1, however the means in which SCP-3115 has detected the signal is unknown. Test 3115-2 Subject D88743 Procedure D88743 is directed to enter the containment chamber and plug SCP-3115 into a provided USB portable power pack. D88743 is instructed to wear SCP-3115. D88743 is permitted to leave the containment chamber after 5 minutes as per previous test. Results D88743 follows instructions exactly. Upon wearing SCP-3115, D88743 removes SCP-3115, stating surprise at hearing SCP-3115-A 
instead of a standard broadcast. D88743 is instructed to place SCP-3115 on his head again, which he does without argument. After five minutes has elapsed, D88743 unplugs SCP-3115, removes them from his head, and leaves the containment chamber. Analysis Audio output matches that of WKS-FM. D88743 is placed in observations for one week following test, but shows no negative effects. D88743 expresses reluctance to partake in further tests, claiming that the voice of SCP-3115-A unnerved him. Test 3115-3 Subject D88743 Procedure D88743 is instructed to follow procedures as Test 3115-2, however is instructed to remain in the containment chamber, wearing SCP-3115 for 16 minutes. Results Upon passing the 15-minute mark, D-88743 stands and appears panicked. D-88743 asks research staff how that guy has been able to get into the room without using the only door, which was locked as part of testing procedures. Upon passing the 16-minute mark, D-88743 leaves the containment chamber, complaining of a headache. Analysis D-88743 reports seeing the manifestation of SCP-3115-A. D-88743 is extremely paranoid following this test and has shown any aversion to wearing any form of headphones again. D-88743 was treated in the medical bay for a migraine and was placed under observation. During this time, D-88743 spoke aloud the cognitohazardous phrase he had heard from SCP-3115-A, exposing a member of medical staff to stage 1 infection. Class A amnestics proved effective in neutralizing infection in both persons. D-88743 is terminated as per standard D-Class protocols at the end of the month. Test 3115-4 Subject D-4452 Procedure D-4452 is instructed to follow procedure as per Test 3115-2, however is instructed to remain within the containment chamber, wearing SCP-3115 until instructed otherwise. Results D-4452 follows instructions exactly. D-4452 expresses similar symptoms to D-88743 after the 15-minute mark. At 23 minutes, 6 seconds, following activation of SCP-3115, D-4452 begins convulsing in a seat and speaking unintelligibly, now believed to be in stage 6 infection. D-4452 rapidly begins vocalizing cognitohazardous phrases before expiring. During this test, five research staff were observing the test using both a visual and audio feed. All five personnel were infected immediately with stage 6 infection on hearing the cognito hazard. This quickly spread to security personnel stationed outside. A containment breach was declared and all personnel removed from within earshot of infected persons. SCP-3115 was removed from D-4452's head with the assistance of researcher Tan, who was declared medically deaf. Post-mortem examination of infected personnel deduced the cause of death to be cardiac arrest. Analysis This test caused a site-wide containment breach to be declared. A follow-up investigation has led to the current containment procedures. Testing is to be indefinitely suspended, pending a review by the Department of Internal Security. Incident Report IR-3115-A 
On the 4th of April 2017, SCP-3115 underwent its first site-wide containment breach since containment was first established. This item had been considered relatively safe by research staff, given its manageable anomalous properties, and as such, major liberties were taken in containment of SCP-3115, resulting in less than safe conditions. At 0420 hours on the 4th of April 2017, five members of the Department of Research at Site Redacted commenced test 3115-4. This test was sanctioned by the site memetics department in accordance with foundation policy and conformed to all containment procedures hitherto established. All personnel involved were experienced researchers with a variety of backgrounds in science, and this was the fourth such test that this team had undertaken with SCP-3115. The experiment required the use of one D-Class personnel designated D-4452. The aim of the test was to establish the effects of prolonged exposure to the anomalous properties of SCP-3115 on human test subjects, and the subsequent effectiveness of Class A amnestics on said subject. Prior to this test, no test subject had been exposed to the anomalous properties of SCP-3115 for more than 16 minutes. At the time, the containment chamber was structurally sound, with soundproofing remaining at 100% effectiveness throughout the test. The cell was fitted with three standard HD CCTV cameras providing a view of all angles of the room. These cameras were fitted with standard audio microphones, which could be switched on and off by the personnel in the observation booth. At the commencement of the test, all cameras and microphones were activated by the research staff to document and monitor the test as it progressed. As per standard protocol for testing on SCP-3115, all microphones were altered to only pick up loud and deliberate sound in the room, so as to prevent accidental recording of SCP-3115's anomalous audio. At 23 minutes and 6 seconds after the commencement of the test, D-4452 began exhibiting symptoms of stage 6 infection of SCP-3115. D-4452 convulsed in an apparent epileptic fit for 1 minute and 32 seconds, falling from his chair in the process. It has been found that the research staff made several errors at the commencement of stage 6 infection. At the time that D-4452 entered the advanced stage, audio recording was disabled on the microphones. In an attempt to communicate with D-4452 to inquire as to his well-being, and in order to gather more information of the current exposure, one of the researchers activated the microphone on the cameras. A two-way communication was then opened, which exposed all five personnel in the observation booth to immediate stage 6 infection of SCP-3115. The observation booth itself was not soundproofed, as it was outside of SCP-3315's containment chamber. Due to the volume of the researchers' subsequent vocalizations, the sound permeated through the gaps in the doorframe and exposed the two security guards stationed outside. Their vocalizations was then picked up by the CCTV cameras in the hallway, which transferred the infection to the camera control operator in the security command center. The infection then spread throughout a small portion of the facility before the event was witnessed by a member of staff through a non-audio CCTV camera. This staff member then activated the site's containment breach alarm and established contact with security stationed outside of the containment wing. At this time, the site's computer mainframe underwent an automatic assessment of the situation and updated the site director, informing him that the containment breach did not meet the required parameters for detonation of on-site warheads. A further error in containment then occurred, whereby further security personnel entered the containment wing in order to re-establish containment, further spreading the infection to those personnel. Site records indicate that proper safe working protocols were not followed by staff at the site during this containment breach. Standard operating procedures for an auditory anomaly undergoing containment breach states that Mobile Task Force Ada-11, Savage Beasts, must be informed immediately. This procedure was not followed, 
and Mobile Task Force Ada-11 was not informed until 14 minutes and 44 seconds after the activation of the containment breach alarm. It is fortunate that Site Redacted was home to personnel who are medically declared deaf. Researcher Tan, in this case, had no previous experience working with SCP-3115 and was employed in a primarily back-office role. Notably, Researcher Tan only holds Level 1 security clearance as a newer member of staff, and as such was not authorized to be informed of the nature of SCP-3115 or even entered the containment wing. This breach of protocol is to be referred to the Department of Internal Security. Researcher Tan was able to successfully remove SCP-3115 from the head of D-4452 and eject the USB from the socket terminating the anomalous properties of SCP-3115. Using a decibel meter, Researcher Tan then confirmed that all personnel affected by SCP-3115 had expired prior to signaling the all-clear. Standard site operations resumed at 1340 hours that day. The incident resulted in the following casualties. 1. D-Class Personnel 12. Research Personnel 10 security personnel, 3 clerical personnel, 1 janitorial personnel. The details of this report have been forwarded to the containment for post-incident analysis and Mobile Task Force 11 for their comment and endorsement. I await the response before submitting my findings to the Department of Administration in a post-incident review. Signed, Colonel H. Briggs. Incident Review Bureau. Department of Security Addendum 3115-2 Notes on Acquisition SCP-3115 was acquired by the Foundation in 2006 when the object was discovered sitting on the approach road to Site-19 by research staff on their way to work. A review of the CCTV footage from around Site-19 shows an unknown male walking in the middle of the approach road from out of the surrounding woodlands before placing SCP-3115 down on the tarmac. CCTV from inside the wooded area where the male appeared does not show the male or any other traces of human life in the area, and no breaches of the outer perimeter fence were discovered. The male disappeared back into the woods moments before the personnel discovered the item. Note from researcher Katash An excerpt from the CCTV footage captured at the acquisition of SCP-3115 was shown to D-88743 prior to his termination. He has confirmed my suspicions that the male who delivered the SCP to us matches the description of SCP-3115-A. Given that SCP-3115-A is likely a real individual, and more than likely the creator of SCP-3115, his capture and interrogation are of high priority. We need to know this guy's motives. After all, we could have just brought a memetic weapon straight into one of our facilities. Recommend improved screening of all such deliveries in the future. Signed, Researcher Katash. Thank you for listening to SCP-3115, 99.7 Cognito Hazard FM, by Researcher Katash. If you enjoyed this SCP, please like and subscribe, and follow the link in the description to the SCP Wiki, and vote up the article to support the author and the SCP Wiki as a whole.